Yo, what's going on guys? It's Talon and today I'm going to be talking about drafting. I thought this would be a great video to have after the champion pool guide so now you can know when to pick your champions that you decided on for your champion pool. So I'm just going to talk about some of the things I think are most important for drafting and then after we go through that I'll go through a few examples um, and tell you guys kind of why I pick what I pick in these situations based on my champion pool. So first it's important to have a mixture of damage so you want some ap and you want some ad you don't want both because then the opponents can itemize against that and build a lot of armor or whatever now there are situations where this is less important and one situation is when you have a lot of true damage if you have a lot of true damage it's not going to matter as much whether or not you have a lot of ap or ad and then another important thing is if they have less tanks and not very many front lines they're not going to be able to itemize as effectively against just one singular damage type so they can build some items like um, a lot of bruisers build death dance for example or uh, guardian angel could be built by like an ADC or something but just compared to if they had a lot of tanks it's not going to be as bad simply just having um, full AD or full AP. Next um, is going to be having a mixture of frontline and DPS. So typically you're going to want to have at least like one tankier champion with some CC. This does not have to be a full on tank. It doesn't have to be like an Ornn or a Malphite. It just has to be maybe like a Darius, a Wukong, anything with just like a decent amount of CC in their kit so that you can start start off fights. So ideally you're going to have that, of course. Um, now there are situations where it's less important to have a frontline and that's going to be when you have a, like a really big poke composition. So if you have champions like Ezreal, Jace, Karma all together, in this situation, you don't actually need to ever engage because you just poke them down before they're able to actually engage on you. To do this, you're usually going to need to get to the objectives first, and it's going to be harder to execute, so generally I would just recommend having a tank. But there are cases where you can totally win without having a tank, and it's not like you need to give up just because you simply don't have a tank. So next is just the general identity of a team comp. So again, if you have a lot of poke champions, picking another poke champ might be pretty good in those situations to just really like lean heavily towards that. But also having a good mixture still um, in your identity and not being too heavily focused on one thing. So not just having five tanks or five backlines is typically going to be ideal. Um, then another important thing is kind of picking for your matchup in lane. So if you are, you, know, you obviously don't want to get countered in lane just as much as later on in the game. So... Generally, you're going to want to, if you can, see what the opponents are picking. And then in that case, you, you know, pick based on that. So that you can counter, ideally counter the enemy or at least not get countered by the enemy laner. And then lastly is going to be a mix of early and late game champions. So if you have five early game champions, then if the game goes to a certain point, you're just kind of going to be screwed over because you're not really going to be able to win because you're just going to get outscaled so hard. But on the opposite side of things, if you only have late game champions, it's going to be very hard to get through that early game and you're going to get snowballed on really, really hard. So just in general, mixing up the amount of early and late game champs. So if you see a lot of late game champs on your team, maybe try picking an early game champion and vice versa. So those are just some of the things I think about while I'm drafting. And then I'm just going to take you guys through a few drafts, let you know what I'm thinking, let you know what's good and bad about the drafts and what I maybe would have done differently uh, had I done it again. Okay guys, so in this draft I am playing support. My champion pool for support is typically going to be Nautilus, Thresh, Nami, Karma, and Ash at the moment. So those are the champions I'm choosing between. Now I usually want to see what my ADC picks, especially for support. So ideally I will see what they pick. Now I look at the enemy comp and I see that they're going Orn, Vi, Misfortune. Orn is not going to deal a ton of damage to me specifically just because of the fact that he's a tank and he's in the top side of the map. Now, Vi and Misfortune are champions that might be dealing damage to me, and both of them auto-attack a good amount, especially Vi. This makes me think I might want some type of Frozen Heart champion, because I, I want to build Frozen Heart so that I can stop that, ideally. This is why I'm going to end up going with Thresh in this situation. Now, I also want to see what my teammate picks, and hope that they pick something that combos well with the Thresh CC. And I'm going to end up hovering Thresh here, see what they pick. And then they show Zaya, and I'm very happy with that. So once I see the Zaya, I lock in the Thresh. And it looks very good for me. Now I get really lucky and they also pick a Pantheon for mid lane. Meaning that they have full AD basically. Because I don't even know what type of damage Orin does to be honest. But regardless Orin isn't going to deal much damage to me. Neither is Leona. Misfortune, Vi, and Pantheon are really what are going to be dealing damage to me. So having that armor and just being able to stack a ton of armor. Especially with Thresh passive I know is going to be super super good for me for this draft. So that's basically why I picked Thresh in this draft. Okay guys so first I'm going to talk about banning. And then I'll go through the whole draft. So, I typically just ban a champion that either counters my champion really hard, counters a couple of the champions I play really hard, 
where I just consider it to be annoying, um, unfun to play against, and really strong. So for me, Lulu is extremely annoying, extremely easy to play, um, probably the best support in the game in my opinion right now, and just overall really broken, so I end up banning her. Again, whatever champ annoys you or counters you is fine to ban. We see an Ornn early here. I know we need a frontline. My Nautilus is banned. I decide I'm going to go with Thresh. He's tanky. He's got good CC. Um, he's got good utility. Good in lane. Good late game. So just generally a good blind pick. So that's why I'm going to go with a good blind pick like Thresh. Now we see them pick Swain and Gragas. So now they have Ornn, Swain, Gragas. They're extremely tanky. And we have Thresh and Pike. Neither Thresh nor Pike deal much damage to front lines, so we really need people who can melt through their front lines, as well as a good mix of AP and AD so that they can't itemize against us. We get a Jax who is not great at dealing with front line, but does alright, and Jax does some AP which is decent, but apart from that we're going to get a Riven. Again, Riven can work okay against the front lines, but not great. We don't really have anyone to really melt through these front lines, and additionally we have mostly AD, so they're going to be able to stack armor against us, making it very hard for us to ever kill them. So what we would need from the ADC here is ideally like a Vayne or a Corky because Corky does AP or Vayne because of the true damage and the really good uh, melting tanks. So if we got one of those types of picks, it'd be really good for us here. But instead we end up getting a Jin, which is not great. And the reason for that is again because Jin does not deal a ton of damage to front lines. Jin is AD, meaning that we're going to have more AD. And we're just going to get uh, itemized against really heavily by these tanks. They're going to build a ton of armor. We're never really going to be able to kill them and winning the game is just going to be extremely extremely difficult just due to this draft because if we get to a certain point in the game we're just simply not going to be able to kill their front lines in this game okay guys so this next draft has some really important things that i want to note as well so here initially i see that i already have a front line in the jungle nautilus and then i have a not great laner in kaisa so initially i'm thinking about i already have a front line and i need to somehow assist this kaisa in lane as much as possible to get her to the late game so from my champion pool i'm thinking that nami is probably going to be best at doing this because of how good her laning is i can really help out the kaisa and since we already have a front line i don't really need to be playing a frontline champion so if we go through a little more they have a ton of poke with ezreal and jace so because of all that poke that they have there i need to make sure that i have some way to deal with that healing is a great way to counter poke champions so in general, thinking about the type of comp they have and what their comp wants to do and figuring out a way to deal with that is very important. So here I'm Nami. I can heal up the poke that Ezreal and Jace do to my team. And then I also bring the heal spell so I can heal it up even further. And then alongside that, again, the great laning with Kai'Sa and the fact that I already have a tank in Nautilus, as well as the fact that I'm going to be mixing up our AP and AD since I have an AP uh, champ in Nami. And then we have the AP in Nautilus and then Kai'Sa can choose if she wants AP or AD. And then we have the Z AD. So we have a good mix of ADAP, we have front line as well as good back line, we have good laning, we have a good mix of late game and early game with the uh, with the Kaisa, the Katarina, the Zed, and then like also the early game laning with the with myself and with Nautilus and all that. Um, and then we have the counter to their composition because they have again now a Teemo as well. So they have Teemo, Jace, Ezreal, a lot of poke. So we interact very well into their composition, which is why I think that this draft is quite good for us. All right, that's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as always. Again, just important to note, kind of thinking about who you're countering on the enemy team, who's going to counter you, mixing up the early and late game champs, a uh, good mix of damage types, and all of those types of things that I noted in the intro are going to be what you're generally going to want to be keeping track of um, in the games for your drafting. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any suggestions in the future for other content or anything like that, let me know, and I'll see you guys later.